Hello, everyone. How are you guys today? Alrighty. Um, welcome to Mystery View 2020's pageant. There it is. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, let's give a boys another round of applause for that wonderful talent. Woo! Alrighty. My name is Michael Perez, and I am the UUSA Traditions Chair. As the di pageant director, it is now my pleasure to introduce your MCs for this evening. First, we have UVUSA Senator of the College Humanities of Science, Taylor Johnson, and tonight is the beautiful Melanie Griffin, our UUSA Inclusion Ambassador. Woo! Hello, welcome everybody to the pageant. We are so excited to have you and thank you for that introduction, Michael. We are so excited to be here as your MCs for the night. In tonight's pageant, our contestants are going to be judged in five categories. Fitness wear, talent, evening wear, video interview, and onstage interview. The breakdown for scoring is as follows. 10% for the onstage interview, 10% for the video interview, 20% for formal wear, 20% for fitness wear, and 40% for talent. I am so excited. The first place winner of this pageant is gonna win $250. That is a lot of money, isn't it, Taylor? It's quite a lot. I could go to In-N-Out 25 times with that. <laughs> Amen to that. We are looking forward to seeing what these guys have in store for us. But before we get started for the competition, let's introduce our fantastic judges. First, we have a living legend, our current Mr. UVU, Danny Brown. Second, we have the Glory Davis, Miss Oram, beautiful as ever. Next, we have Rosario Uribe, the queen of Costa Vida. We love to see it. And our last but not least contestant is we have the amazing Todd Olson. Yes, the iconic Todd Olson, ladies and gentlemen. And finally, last but very much not least, we have Andrea Betts, the coordinator for UVU Clubs. You know, I don't know about you, Melanie, but I am super excited to meet all of our awesome contestants this evening. Yes, it looks like it's going to be an exciting evening and night that we have in store. Now it's time for these guys to show off a little. Let's get started with our fitness portion. Our first contestant here is Jeff Goff, Mr. Wolverine Ambassador. Wow, look at the form, look at the talent. 
the fitness. We love to see it. Ladies and gentlemen, give Jeff a round of applause. Wow, the coordination, the skills. Oh, yeah. The skills. Yes. Wow. All right, our second contestant is Mr. Nolan Raven, Mr. Alumni. Give him a round of applause, ladies and gents. The physique. I'll never be able to live up to that, Melanie. I don't know what to do. I know. That's a strong man right there. We love to see it, ladies and gentlemen. We love to see it. Give it up for Nolan. Contestant number three, Aaron Fairborn, Mr. Science. Wow. He is giving me folk dancing realness, ladies and gentlemen. I feel like I am in the mountain somewhere. All right, contestant number four, Taylor Melvin, Mr. Involvement. Wow, he has transported me straight to a tropical island where everything is good. The pandemic hasn't hit yet. We love to see it. Beautiful. The talent, the skills, UBUSA's best and brightest. Contestant number five, we have is Cooper Fulmer, Mr. Showman. Yes, Cooper showing off that. that flexibility, that strength, that beautiful flowy hair. I think we're about to see some acrobatics. Here we go, here we go. Wow. You know, I don't know about you, but I think that we have some real talent here tonight. Talent, bottom uh, line. I agree, Taylor, we sure do. Did you know though, Mr. UVU's pageant has been a tradition since 1989. I did not know that. And what a coincidence because my favorite Taylor Swift album is also 1989. We that love is, that. That's a good album. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we are headed into the talent round. Remember, this round accounts for 40% of each contestant's final score. Each contestant will be introduced first with a video before they display their wonderful talent. Let's get started with our talent portion. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen, for our contestants. Best spot to do camp homework on campus, uh, that would have to be uh, top floor of the uh, library, you know? It's uh, freaking awesome up there. I really enjoy it. Uh, plenty of views. No one can see you cry sometimes if you hide behind one of the bookshelves. It's great. My ideal date. Me and my date, we go to the uh, ice cream shop. She gets kidnapped by her ex-boyfriend. And uh, I have to do my ninja moves to fight off all of her ex-boyfriend's friends, and then we confront her ex-boyfriend together. She finally says that she's over him and that she's uh, found me because of my masculinity. My favorite thing to watch during quarantine was uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, and some people say that it's anime, but it's not anime, it's freaking art, okay? If you wanna deuce it out, meet me, Fulton Plaza, 10 p.m. after Mr. UVU, and we'll come and fight about Avatar The Last Airbender.
You know, yeah. Melanie, I don't know about you, but I think after that performance, all of us are going to be a little bit wet and gushy, if I do say so <laughs> myself. Hey, Amen. I'm getting a little hot over here. I don't know about you, Taylor. Oh, gosh. Too hot up in here. That was amazing. Thank you, Jeff. For our next performance, we have is the wonderful and amazing Nolan. Let's bring him out here. Or let's move to the screen. We'll see his perform his video. <laughs> found one spot there's a little corner in the library I couldn't tell you how to get it to there from here but once you sit there there's like a vending machine like 10 feet away and the sun's not on your computer screen and no one else is there so it's pretty sick Ooh, ideal date ideal date so you go to like some kind of like cheesy like 60s style diner like in and out but don't go to in and out because that's classic um, and then you go for like a midnight hike or something just some place where you can always be talking and communicating uh, and if she's into it, you can watch stars. But if not, just drop her off respectfully. I rewatched Parks and Rec, which was like just really fun because I forgot how funny that show was. I think it's better than The Office. If that loses me this whole Mr. UVU thing, then I'll take it. But let's go. So I was sitting there, it was like nine o'clock at night. I get this text from uh, my student alumni president, vice president. I don't know if it's for this Sorry, Jeff. And he's like, guys, no one showed up to sign up for the Mr. UVU pageant. And I was like, I got nothing else to do. So I signed up and here I am. <laughs> here I am indeed. This is about to be a little crazy because it's all improvised. Um, I did not know we had to do a talent portion, so this is going to be really fun. I'm going to tell a cool story because my biggest talent is being a good friend. <clears throat> so there I was, senior year. And my friend turned to me and said, do you know I've never been to Disney World? I was like, all right, I get the hint. So. I got with my other friend, we saved up a lot of money, pulled in extra shifts, and we took her to Disney World. It was great. Especially the part when you walk through the gate and you find out the ticket got declined. And you're like, oh, well, I thought we paid for this. And so, after about an hour of looking for receipts through my car, we found it, and we got through the gate. And that began the happiest day of my friend's life. <clears throat> if you've never seen someone's reaction when they go to Disney World, I highly recommend it, because their face is like this. And you're just like, wow, I didn't know this place was that cool. But it is. And we went through that whole day just having fun, laughing, having great jokes. <clears throat> and I remember thinking that, that whole day, right? There was no like conflict or like problems, right? We just set that aside and became friends with each other. And of course we were friends before that, but at that moment we became closer. And that's what we need to do now as people. We need to find these experiences and these moments where we can come together. Right? These moments of pure like, excitement and be like, hey, you know what? We might stand different over there, but here we stand together, so let's work from here to get to there. And my goal in doing that is to hopefully bring everybody together. So my invitation is, of course, for everyone to just be friends with each other. Find something to make another person happy, and then use that to get closer to them. And then use that to make a group closer, and use that group to change the world. Um, and that's what I have for you guys today. Thank you very much. The articulation, the inspiration, the motivation, the talent, ladies and gentlemen. I am truly inspired by that. Thank you so much, Nolan. All right, our next performer bringing us his talent is Mr. Aaron Fairborn. So I am a VP in student alumni, and last year we uh, had this activity where we made caramel in the Alumni Center. It overflowed, there was smoke everywhere, fire alarms went off. Um, yeah, I was in charge of the event. It didn't look super great, but you know, everything worked out. Growing up, the Jonas Brothers were my inspiration. I just must say, it would be the Jonas Brothers. Honestly, chilling in a park with Chick-fil-A and Chick-fil-A sauce, you know, hopefully with a girl, that sounds great. <laughs> I think that it would be great for students to actually be aware of the many, many resources that they have available to them. So basically raising awareness for that. And you know what's like they say, and I quote, Ain't no finer sport than poker. In 
1950. Ah, oh, come on, Biggs, you don't really think poker's a sport now, do you? I mean, come on. Where's the running? Where's the jumping? Where's the passing? Huh? This ain't a ball game. Look, poker ain't a sport. Match. Poker's a sport. It's competitive. It requires finesse of the brain. Not to mention that it requires tactics. And also there is an innate physical exertion inherent in the event. See? Poker is a sport, by definition. Ah, oh, Biggs, you loony, come on. Poker ain't a sport. Look, I just don't think you know what you're talking about. What is this physical exertion that you're referring to? I ain't seen you do so much as uh, sit here and, uh, you know, toss in a couple chips this whole evening. You disrespect me again on my turf. Me and the boys will come and break your kneecaps. How's that for your physical exertion, Davy? Uh, all, all right, all right. Look, I ain't looking for no trouble here, see? Okay, poker's a sport. Poker's a sport, like you always says. And, and might I say, what a fine athlete at it you are. Uh, two pair. Yeah, and don't you forget it. A pair of ladies, full house. You know, Melanie, I feel like we were just transported to the Tonys. That's what that felt like. I think so, too. That was amazing. A man of many roles. I like it. A man of many personalities. <laughs> that was great. Next, we have Taylor. The best part on campus to do homework is nowhere because I never get it done on campus because I have so many friends here and I get distracted. I'm like, ooh, like shiny, let's, let's go to the bookstore instead. No, don't do homework on campus if you want to get stuff done, folks. PSA by Taylor. What was my most embarrassing story? Well, funny you ask. Um, just now when we were doing the dance moves, I fell backwards while I was hanging out with my guitar trying to do like a weird like hip thrust thing and I fell and hit my butt on the floor. Why did I decide to run in this year's pageant? Um, partially because I didn't win. No, I'm kidding. I really loved the experience I had last year. Um, I was happy for Danny that he won and stuff because he's a really good friend of mine now actually. I think it's my time. I want to plug in. I want to live life to the fullest and I knew I would have regrets if I didn't do this again. So I'm gonna be playing a song that's pretty near and dear to my heart. Um, I have a twin and this is our song. Nikki, this one's for you. It's Hey Soul Sister by Train and feel free to sing along if you know the words.
why I'm so obsessed. My heart is bound to be right out of my untrimmed chest. Cause I believe in you like a virgin, you're Madonna, and I'm always gonna everyone so much. Ladies and gentlemen, the voice of an angel. That was beautiful. Thank you so much, Taylor. All right. Our last contestant, most certainly not least, we have Cooper Fulmer. Give it up for Cooper, guys. If I was stuck on an island, what three things? Um, so first we'll go practical. I'd have to have a knife. You, you just have to have a knife. Does the internet count? Can I have the internet? I'm gonna go, yeah, okay, I want the internet. <laughs> and a nice hammock would be good. I guess the internet's useless without something to access it with, but oh well. If I win Mr. UVU, um, I think you, it does a lot of good to just be really fun and outgoing and out there and be really accessible to incoming students because obviously I don't have a lot of knowledge of like, oh, what this specific student needs help with right at this very moment, but I think just being generally friendly and being an open face that people can just say hi to is, is a good way to help out. Most embarrassing story, oh gosh. I don't even get embarrassed very easily. I think anytime I've been performing and like dropped a trick or something, that's, that's pretty embarrassing, but I just don't really get embarrassed. I tend to just kind of roll with it. It turns into a good joke later. I'm here to win and just prove that I'm the best and freaking awesome. Cooper. Let's That's give it up a round, another round of applause. Yes. That was great. All of our wonderful gentlemen tonight have great talents. I think my life flashed for my eyes several times there. Um, but you know, what else is new? It's 2020. We <laughs> have a show tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I would not want to be the judges right now. You know, we've still got some time going on, but even after that, I'm glad I don't have to make the decision. I'm also petrified of making decisions, so it's good that I'm an MC. All right, Melanie, take us away. I feel you. I'm a Libra, so I don't make decisions at all. I'm bad at that, too. 
But ladies, get your phones out because after the pageant, you are one to grab some numbers here. Ladies and gentlemen, get your phones out. Find their Instagram. Find them on any of the dating apps we've got up in here. It's Utah Valley. We're all hungry. Get ready for it. Do we love to see it? All right, Melanie, what is next for our competition tonight? Yes, next is my favorite part of the pageant. It's formal wear. So each contestant will now showcase their formal wear with a lovely escort. This is my favorite part as well. Can't wait to see all of our gentlemen decked out in their best looks with our lovely escorts. It's going to be awesome. Yes, and the contestants will also be judged how they answer formable onstage qu interview questions. All right, let's bring each contestant out. This is the part. This is the moment where they get to articulate their thoughts. All right, first, we have Jeff Goff, who will be escorted by Karen Magana. And uh, Jeff Goff was born in 1996, right here in the 801. Growing up, Jeff had to battle with irrational fears of women, chili workers, and death eaters. He is currently studying psychology here at UVU, and no, he does not have time to listen to your problems. He is still trying to figure out his own. Jeff's current job is a stay-at-home astronaut, a job he has had for over 23 years now. After Jeff graduates, he hopes to do what all men at his age hope to accomplish, to not collapse in on himself like a dying star. At the end of Jeff's life, he hopes to see a world which has finally accepted that Taylor Swift is our true supreme leader. And I have to agree, ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Goff. All right, Jeff, here's the question we have for you. Are you ready for it? Let's do it. Jeff, when you have a bad day, what do you do to make yourself feel better? Ooh, this is a good question. I definitely have had plenty of practice during 2020, right? Um, let's see. Um, first, I like to, you know, wallow in self-pity a little bit. Um, then, of course, I get over that. And eventually, I like to just take a little bit of a moment to breathe, you know, kind of find the good things that happened that day. And even if nothing good happened, I try to see it and say, hey, what did I learn from this situation? Maybe I made a new friend. Maybe I learned something... Uh, like a talent that I didn't know that I had or that I got to practice patience that day. Um, and then, you know, things kind of seem to work out and if it's a bad day, I'll have a little bit of ice cream as well, right? The positivity. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, give it uh, up for Jeff. So we love to see it. Also, beautiful suit jacket. We love that. All right. Our second contestant is Nolan Raven and he will be escorted by Katie Murrow. Nolan was born in 2000 and has moved every four years. Nolan is 5'11", but on Tinder, he's six feet tall. He also used to like long walks on the beach until he moved here. Now he likes hiking, maybe. Nolan is studying biotechnology so that he can make cyborgs and take over the world. Nolan is often found surviving pandemics, wearing masks, and waiting for the end of the world. He's also a part of Gen Z, which means that he'll fight a racist, but won't tell you that you got his order wrong. Nolan just moved here and has a total of one friend. So ladies, hit him up at Nolan underscore Raven on Instagram. Lastly, he wants everyone to know that you should live your own life. Nolan Raven, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if you saw it, Taylor, but Nolan just proposed to his escort there. You missed it. What a story. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nolan, here we go. What is your biggest fear? I would have to say my biggest fear is not being able to take care of the ones around me. Um, I've always been able to provide for those around me and help them in either an emotional or financial or physical way. Um, and my biggest fear is always coming short in that and coming short of people's expectations for me. Ladies and gentlemen, Nolan Raven, give him a hand. <laughs> my biggest fear is not being a good MC, so. Cut me some slack, y'all. <laughs> All right, contestant number three is Aaron Fairborn, and he will be escorted by the beautiful Kennedy Going. At the tender age of three, Aaron climbed a rusty rebar ladder to the top of a three-story grain silo to see what was inside. Also at that time, he became an expert potion master by frequently and haphazardly mixing all household chemicals together in a gallon bucket. Despite having peaked at age three, he is very proud of his ability to cook minute rice in 58 seconds and provide interesting but useless facts about Avatar The Last Airbender. Currently, he is a third-year biology student, which is why he claims the title Mr. Science. 
Aaron hopes to achieve financial independence by age 35 through real estate investment and reminds everyone that if you're boring, stop being boring. Aaron Fairborn, ladies and gentlemen. All right, Aaron, this is a good question. I honestly love it. Are you ready for it? Let's go. Let's do it. If you were stuck in an elevator, who would you want to be stuck in an elevator with? Oh boy, that is a great question. I mean, probably just a mirror, because I love myself so much, you know? <laughs> Actually, no, it's because I don't really like anyone. I want to be alone. I need my space, okay? Thank you. Wow, the brutal honesty. We love to see it, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. All right, contestant number four tonight is Taylor Melamid, and he will be escorted by my VP, Lucy Watson. Give him a big round of applause. Born and raised in Los Angeles, Taylor Melamid is a proud transgender Jew. He only found out in July that pulled pork does not come pre-pulled. The only thing he finds difficult about Utah is the weather. In the summer, you can find him complaining about how hot it is outside, and in the winter, he's the dude on campus who looks like the abominable snowman. In his free time, he can be found trying to grow a beard, watching football, playing guitar, and swiping mindlessly on Tinder, don't we all? Ladies and gentlemen, Taylor Melamint. Let the record show that I was wearing guitar socks. That's why I left, uh, lifted up my um, pants. Just putting that out there. Awesome. Taylor, Hello. this is a good question too. Are you ready? Yeah, if it's about parking again. <laughs> it's no, awesome. Yes, awesome. it says, what is your favorite food that your mom makes? Okay, so um, my mom doesn't cook. Um, I'm gonna put that out there right now. Hopefully she doesn't get mad at me for telling the story, but I'm gonna tell it because it was bad on us. So um, the last time my mom tried to cook for us, she made this really nice pot pie from scratch. And I only ate the, the meat and the, like the layer, like the flaky layer. And then my dad only ate the pastry layer. And then my sister only ate the vegetables. And she was like, that's it. I'm never cooking for them again. So yeah, so she doesn't cook. Um, the pot pie was up there though. If I had actually eaten it while she was cooking it, like the day of, she probably would have not stopped cooking for us. But yeah, have a good one. Ladies and gentlemen, Taylor Melamed, give him a big round of applause. Thank you. All right, last for the interview portion, we have Cooper Fulmer, and he will be escorted, escorted by Sarah Grosbeck. <laughs> Gotta work on my diction, y'all. The 2006 Time Person of the Year, Cooper Fulmer is a student here at UBU majoring in international business and minoring in languages. He can speak two languages fluently, is working on his third and fourth, and will happily use all four to throw shade and also tell his friends who he thinks is cute. Like every typical Utah Valley raised kid, he loves riding longboards down the canyon. Cooper is here for the sheer glory of winning the Mr. UVU title and crown. His greatest joy comes from brightening other people's days and making other people smile. Let's be honest though, when it comes down to it, he's just happy to be here. Cooper Fulmer, everybody. All right, Cooper, what is your favorite season and why? Um. My favorite season is not winter, because I hate the cold. But if I had to pick just one, I would say spring, because when I was like living in Asia, they have all the flowery trees that come out, and you just like walk down, you walk down the street and it's just, everything's pink. Or, or you'll be like next to a mountain, the whole mountainside is just, just pink. I just kind of like the color pink, so you know, it just kind of works. So spring, I guess, does that, does that work? That works. Great answer, you can never get enough pink. Cooper <laughs> Fulmer, ladies and gentlemen, give him a round of applause. Taylor, we've been saying it all night, but we have some great contenders here today. Great contenders. Judges, I do not envy your position right now. No, I definitely don't either. I wouldn't want to make a decision, can't make a decision for the life of me. All of these guys have clearly put in a lot of work, and I'm glad I'm not the one scoring them. I agree. It's going to be a tough decision. Next, we have a special treat for you. We have our current Mr. UVU here to perform for us. The talent that won him the crown last year. Prepare to be amazed. Take it away, Danny. So, quick clarification. I'm actually performing a different talent because when the pandemic hit, I stopped dancing and I'm not as flexible. I guess I'll do a split though. Okay, so... Um, what I'm gonna be performing is a song that I wrote because I started writing songs when the pandemic hit because I don't like being bored. I'm gonna drink some water and then I'm gonna sing a song.
Okay, I'm ready. was like a drug to you and you were to me and you'd get me so high that I wouldn't see the signs on the road yeah we sped right by but I'm way too drunk to take you for that ride so but I'm sorry it's over and my dear was so Sober, and now it's over. <clears throat> you never want to be the one who cares more. Should have listened to my head, left my heart at the door. Cause your love got me intoxicated, mad withdrawals. I never thought that I'd wake up someday and you'd be gone. But now I'm sober, heart's colder. But at least I got it back. It didn't used to be mine. I found closure. I wanted closer. Cause I'm alone in a room, but got a chill down my spine. Cause I thought I felt you here. Really thought I made it clear that I don't just stop existing every time you close your eyes. I won't give another tear. I don't need no one to cheer, man. I got me. And that's the prize. I went and won the trophy, and you ain't even placed. I can't wait to close my eyes and see somebody else's face. I stopped numbing the pain, so now I'm wide awake. It's real hurt, but love's something you can't fake. Sober, I'm sorry it's over. And my deal is so sober, and now it's over. Don't hate me, I gotta be so sober. It's sad, but it's over. My deal is so sober, and now it's over. <clears throat> Look. Thought I could stop at any time, I kept telling I'm fine But if you ain't never seen it clear, how can you tell you was blind? I'm sick of wasted time, sick of you taking mine Ten pennies for your thoughts, cause you wasted a dime I was using a drug, but you used me back Shot of morphine to make it for the joy we lack But it fades just as fast as it hits the spot Left me scrappy and hungry, so I threw away the shot Now I'm done giving you all my life And I vow never to close these eyes Went from intoxication to this toxic hatred Now I'm done letting my years go by Cause it was me and you forever, at least it was at the time But see, forever ain't a number, just the state of your mind and I been growing up and you just getting older and I ain't taking one last hit cause you know I gotta be sober I'm sorry it's over my deal is so sober and now it's over don't hate me I gotta be sober it's sad but it's over my deal is so sober, and now it's over. Oh, it's over. Okay, thanks, guys. Talented, brilliant, amazing, incredible, show stopping, spectacular, totally unique, completely not ever been done before. Thank you so much, Danny. What a talent. It must be nice to be talented, Melanie. It's true. I know I wish I knew how to sing. I used to sing all the time growing up, and my parents would tell me to stop. My self-esteem is horrible now. You can always sing to me, Melanie. <laughs> I love it. That was amazing. Maybe one day he'll be able to teach me that. And I see why, guys. He won the crown last year. Very obvious why. Right. All right, next up, we have a very special treat. Uh, Miss Orem is going to perform for us. Uh, she will take the stage next and perform a wonderful song. Give a round of applause for Glory Davis, Miss Orem, everybody. There are days when I feel so afraid I can hardly remember to breathe. When reality crashes in wave after wave Pulling me further beneath So what's the point in planning for a future If it all can be stolen away It's all I can do to hold on and survive When the colors have faded to gray but my loved ones need so much more from me 
and they give me the strength to go on whatever may come all that matters now is where I go from here there's an easier way if I live for today the beating of my heart is all that They make sense of all of my chaos in ways I can never explain. They turn all of my sadness into a smile. They're helping me live life again. It's the light in the eyes of my loved ones. It's the sound of their laughter once more. It's a glimpse of a life I dare dream and a dream of their life could restore and I know that some may not understand but they're guiding me safely to shore not afraid anymore all that matters now is where we Thank you, Miss Oram. Yes. That was beautiful. Beautiful. A legendary performance, ladies and gentlemen. It was. I believe we almost have those results, folks. But for our last performance of the evening, we will hear from Sam Harado. Sam Harado is the front man of the indie band Maddie's Tattoo. They have played with the likes of other local bands such as Blue Raven Boots, Red Checker, and Button Ups. Sam will be playing a song from Maddie's Tattoo's upcoming EP. Your crazy ex. If you want to hear more of his music, follow Maddie's Tattoo on Instagram. Let's give it up for Sam. Hey guys, my name is Sam, and this song is called Drive Me Home. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you so much for that performance, Sam. And thank you to all of our performers. Uh, it takes a lot of guts and glory to be able to perform in front of an audience. And so we thank you for doing that and helping us give our judges some time to deliberate on the contestants. So now uh, let's bring Michael onto the stage and the rest of the contestants. Um, and we'll get to the most exciting part of the night. Sorry, I'm a little shorter than they are. <laughs> okay. Um, before I announce the winners, um, I want to thank some special people tonight. First, to EVUSA and the EVUSA Activities Branch for their support in planning this event. Next, to all of my committee members with a special thanks to Carson Saunders, Lacey Spangler, Green Team, Will and Tracy from UVU Marketing Center, and their crew for making these wonderful videos and live broadcasting it today. I want to thank all of our judges for being here tonight and our lovely MCs. And for and the Reagan Theater people, they are also here. So, yes. <laughs> um, let's give them a round of applause for the EDC people. Yes. We stand. Okay, Taylor, Melanie, here are the results for both of them. All right. Okay. So, um, first, we're going to get to a tradition of the pageant. Um, Mr. UVU pageant, it's a tradition, a tradition for the contestants to vote for the person they feel best embodies the spirit of the pageant and is the most kind to all the other contestants. Earlier this evening, our contestants here did the same and we will now reveal who was selected as our Mr. Congeniality. So let's get to it. I'm really bad at opening envelopes, if you guys <laughs> can't already tell. They seal them shut. Yeah, like and I just feel like envelopes just, just I think they need to, yeah, they off. need to have like a perforated line. <laughs> All right. Without further ado, our Mr. Congeniality for this year's Mr. UVU pageant is Nolan Raven, Mr. Alumni. Give it up for Nolan, everybody. <laughs> Nolan, you do have a prize coming your way at some point. It will be given to you. All right. Uh, while we're waiting on that, um, I don't we know, find out who Michael, Mr. should we wait for the prize or should we just get to it? I don't want to skip anybody's moment of glory. While we're waiting, folks. <laughs> well, Taylor, tell us a joke. A joke. <laughs> Do you have any jokes? I am bad at jokes, guys. Horrible. Um, the only joke I have is, uh, that, that joke is old. My dating life, that's what it was, ladies and gentlemen. Can I get a laugh for that? <laughs> Thank you. Thank that's you so much. Um, All right, awesome. Yes. Round of applause right, again yes. for Nolan. Nolan. Woo! Mr. Congeniality. Okay, now for the moment of truth, Melanie will open the envelope and we will together announce this year's Mr. UVU. I'm quivering with anticipation. I'm trying to rip it, guys. I'm trying to literally rip it. All right. Are we counting to three and then saying it? Let's do it. Okay. All right, Mr. UVU 2020, the best year ever. One, two, three. Cooper, Cooper Fulmer! Mr. Sherman! Woo! Give a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Our 2020 Mr. UVU. A crowning achievement on a terrible year, ladies and gentlemen. 2020, yes. Yes. We love you, Cooper. Yes. We love you. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for our 2020 Mr. UVU.
All right, well, that's a wrap, folks. If you can remember to wear your mask and socially distance as you exit the Reagan Theater, and then we're gonna get a picture, and yes, everybody have a wonderful night. Melanie and I are so happy to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you.